uh, my name is Brian Demas. Uh, welcome to this Q&A of Frank and Emmett. Uh, I'm one of the producers of the short film. Along with me is Carlos F. Portolas, who is the writer and director of Frank and Emmett, and Jonathan Coria, who is also the producer of the short film alongside with me. So, you know, we're excited to present this short film um, and this Q&A to kind of give you a little bit of insight of the creative process behind the short film and why we made this. And, you know, to kind of kick things off, I uh, just wanted to start with a question for you, Carlos, of what inspired you to make this short film, you know, with your background as an animator and filmmaker as well? Uh, why, uh, what inspired you to, to move forward with, with a, such an interesting project? Yeah, so, um... Well, I think that the backstory of it was like, I always, you know, I'm always been interested in puppets uh, and puppeteering. It's not something that I can do, but I always, you know, enjoy watching it when I was a kid and, and I was a big fan of the Muppets. And, and so on. Uh, actually, we have a little event at work where we went to visit the uh, exhibition for Jim Henson here in Los Angeles, where they have all of the Muppets and all of these great, great, uh, um, you know, memorabilia from from the from the Jim Henson company uh, and we will when we were visiting it then there was a little exhibition where they were showing clips and kind of uh, different recordings of the behind the scenes and shooting of the Muppets and there was a moment there where Jim Henson and Frank Oz two of the you know Jim Henson everybody knows Frank Oz is the, two of the biggest puppeteers right that, that everybody knows were kind of doing a, a test I think they were testing a camera and they were improvising and they were using uh, Kermit the Frog uh, and Fuzzy Bear and they were just in front of a tree somewhere probably here in LA and they were just improvising as they were probably testing this new camera right and they're going back and forth and saying funny things uh, but there's a moment in which uh, um, Fuzzy Bear says like well as a bear I don't remember exactly but something like I'm a bear and this and that and then and then Kermit the Frog kind of tells well you know you're not a real bear, right? Um, and then Fuzzy Bear reacts to it in a very interesting way, but there was almost this kind of like moment of, of telling the truth to the puppet that was very interesting. Uh, and in that case, it was very funny. But when while watching it, I just thought, I just thought there was something very interesting about that concept. Um, and then it got stuck on my head. And, and apart from other ideas that I wanted to do with puppets, that one got, got embedded on my head. And then I started to thinking uh, about the idea that that a kind of like crisis, you know, uh, like a crisis of knowing that you're a puppet, right? And um, so then with all of that, I started to think about what would be the, the best character to tell a, a puppet that is actually a puppet. And I thought I easily understood that the best would be probably being the puppeteer. You know the the creator, the person that created uh, not only the physical puppet but also the the character, right? The 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 persona of this character, and then from that the the story of Frank and Emmett kind of began. Um, and then from there, also like I, it was really easy to write because my connection with it is obviously I'm an animator. I've been working in animated movies for like 16, 17, 18, really long time, right? And, and as an animator, we create characters the same way puppeteers do, right? So you create these characters and sometimes you get to work on them uh, for a number of years. And eventually you kind of feel like uh, they take in a little space of you. You, you, have, you. you have a part of them in you. you. You know how they will answer something. You know how they will act, right? So I have a very direct connection with this idea. So it was very easy to kind of dive in and write the, the short film. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. And, you know, I think as, you know, we work in this industry where we're always collaborating and creating. And I feel like a lot of people feel this connection that you're mentioning between a puppeteer and a puppet when they're, you know, writing a character or performing as a character or writing a short film and directing a yeah. short film. So it's it's an incredibly relatable uh, idea that, which is like, you know, for this short film, we've had a lot of success with a lot of film festivals that have, you know, seen that connection and felt very moved by the short film. Yeah, I think um, it's it's true that that you can tell that people connect to it from different points of view because at the end of the day, what the story is talking about is about like a very personal conversation with with your 
your passion, you know? The thing that you find you, you found in your life that you're good at, maybe it's your profession, maybe something that you do on the side, but something that you're very passionate about. And it's a very personal relationship and conversation on the surface with those two, right? And the meaning of finding that passion and also like transferring that passion to others. So I think that's why a lot of people, like you're saying, Brian, connect to, to that idea, right? Because as an animator, it's a more direct connection. As a, as a puppeteer, it's also very, even more direct connection. But then anybody who write characters or create characters or any, like even people that don't even work in the industry can connect sometimes the, the story and the idea with their passion, the thing that they love, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and speaking of like connecting with the project itself, like Jonathan, um, you know, you've worked as a producer on many things, on features, on uh, short, other short films and music videos. So as a producer, what attracted you to, to jump on in this project with myself and also Carlos to, to, to help move it along its way? Right. Well, besides wanting to work with you, we, we've been friends for a while now. I think what attracted me was just the initial conversation with Carlos. Like Carlos was very, like I could tell he was very enthused about the ideas. He was a little shy, but when he was pitching it to me, there was so much enthusiasm and passion behind what he wanted to do. And he said, like I said before many times, like he gave me the script to take a look at, to consider it, if I wanted to produce it. I read the script and instantly all that sort of passion and exuberance that I just heard from him was oozing on the page. I could see the story. I could see the heartfelt nature of the story. And I'm like, I want to get involved with this because A, I see Carlos's point of view and B, I, I really want to dabble in something that, you know, that makes you feel, that really pays homage to the stuff that made us want to get into this industry. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has their own reason why they want to be here. Everyone has a passion. And I think this piece really pays homage to that passion that all of us really see. So that's, that really inspired me to really get behind it and work with you guys. And it's been an incredible journey as we've all experienced together. <laughs> And and also kind of speaking on that point of the, the journey of that this the success and journey that this short film has had, but there was this interesting journey of making the short film itself. And Carlos, as you mentioned, you, you have gone on this trip and you saw this really great performance of uh, the Muppets and the kind of seen this interesting interaction and in, with Henson and Kermit and Fozzie Bear. Um, but uh, and also a really important aspect of the Muppets itself is music. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that is a really important integral part of the short film and the story itself is the song and the music. And from the beginning, you've always talked about finding the right voice, the right song, something that kind of elicits that nostalgic feel feeling that you hear when you, as soon as you hear Kermit playing that banjo, you know exactly yeah. what he's about to sing. Yeah. So like, how did you approach music and how did it like Kyler England and Tony Morales get involved? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's like you were saying, right? Like, I think a big part of it visually, the look of the film and obviously the music is such a big part of, of, of puppets and the Muppets, right? So it was almost like this sense of uh, trying, like you said, trying to, the moment the, the film starts trying to uh, connect with the audience from that nostalgic point of view, that's why we saw it on a very specific aspect ratio. We wanted to sort it in film, like all the, the the you know the old school Muppets. But it was a, we tried some tests, but it was very complex. But the goal was like to kind of transport you into that kind of childhood memory in a way when when watching the Muppets or any kind of show similar to that. So um, so it was so the music was very important. And honestly, like a lot of the people that we finished working with, uh, the, the music was like so many people that we finished working with was just through talking to friends, other passionate friends. So somehow everything comes down to passion. O other passionate friends that wanted to help. You know, I think uh, a, a friend from work mentioned to me, well, uh, she read the script uh, and she thought, oh, this script is great. I think I might have a friend that's a great musician that might be able to help you with a song. And it was all through that, right? And I, we reached uh, Kyler and, and she read the script. And we we're lucky enough that everybody reacted really well to the script and she was on board. She said, oh, I would love to make this song. Obviously, when I, when I went online to, to kind of 
research her and check out all her songs. It turns out she's an amazing musician, but also she she wrote, she have a whole album that was just more about like kids songs, right? With a very nice uh, sense of like very warm and very like very like the Muppets, you know, in a way. So it was perfect. The moment I heard some of the some of her songs, I was like, whoa, this is perfect. And then similarly with, with Tony Morales, we just kind of put together more of like, like Kylie wrote, Kylie wrote the song, right? The song that, that uh, the lyrics and, and the song that, that is in the, in the surfing, but Tony kind of put it together through the whole film, right? Not just about the song in the film that we kind of highlight on the film, but no, just put the whole thematically, the whole theme of the song, but through the whole film and kind of arrange everything to work together on the film. And with Tony, Similar in that case, it was it was it was your contact, Brian. That that is that that it was passionate and wanted to help because the reality is that we didn't have right like a, a really really big budget, so a lot of it had to do with people that were passionate and wanted to help us, right? Yeah, and what's interesting too um, is you know as initially we were trying to make the short film. This is February 2020. A month later, we're locked down in a pandemic. And although we were like stuck at home, we were like, well, let's keep working on this. Maybe we won't be able to film this summer. Maybe we'll shoot for the fall. But when we reached out to Kyler, you know, obviously like she was stuck at home too. So she was like, I want to work on something uh, other than what I'm already working on. And then Tony, same thing for him. He's a composer that works on television shows, um, movies and everything. And he's like, well, my projects are like on pause for now. So I have some time. So I'm interested in helping out. And so it was really interesting when we were reaching out to people like Jonathan, I would think of like, oh, well, wonder if this person would help, like they would never have time for a short film. And then they would read the script and then the schedule with being stuck at home in a pandemic, they were like, oh yeah. I'm so that totally was a good luck. You know, it was, yeah. yeah, it was lightning it was the in the silver, bottle. The silver, silver lining in, of, that, of that time and era. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it, it it was great. But one thing that I wanted to mention that that have to do with that is like the the you guys always were pushing me to reach for the, the the people to try right because there could be so many reasons why somebody would say no, but there's also a lot of reasons that people would say yes. You know, uh, even for people that we in a normal circumstances wouldn't be able to afford. And then I would always I would always through the process I would always talk about like wait oh. And there's no way we can get this person and then it will happen right because you guys can kind of keep pushing me forward uh and for any for other reasons a lot of them were just literally they wanted to help on on a project like this because they love the story uh, other other ones were that at a combination with good like like you're saying right like they happen to not have nothing to work that moment and they wanted to help so yeah it's all uh it's all a bit of lack and passion basically absolutely and and again, one thing that that really came together really nicely for the short film is, again, as we as we reached out to people to see who could help, uh, Jonathan, you were able to bring along a good friend, uh, Vanessa, who was our production designer, and Alex, who was our art director, to help us with this short film. So, um, you know, can you talk a little bit about the production design and how, like, bringing in people with their experience. Uh, really helped elevate this short film because Carlos had a very specific idea in mind, but bringing them in really helped right. bring a certain I, richness to the short film. Well, it, I instantly, when Carlos, you know, when I read the script and we started talking, all three of us, of like the identity of this piece, not just, you know, like the tone, but also the aesthetic of it all, I instantly thought of Vane, who I had worked with many years on music videos. And she's like a, she's a pro when it comes to that. She's incredibly gifted when it comes to realizing a director's vision. Um, and when we brought her on, she also asked me to work, bring in Alex, who's her art director. And then both of them combined really helped us achieve that nostalgia feeling. Like she already had ideas, like let's make this bedroom feel like, you know, like the puppeteer's bedroom. Let's put puppets up, let's put memorabilia up of, Emmett to showcase that their past that they had with their old road show um, sort of show that they allude to in their conversation just really enrich the world with this sense of nostalgia and memorabilia to really echo the type of friendship that they were having which is which is alluded in their conversation so that was incredible on top of that uh, another person that I wanted to shout out was when we were looking for colorists 
I had brought, we brought in um, uh, Lauren, Lauren White, who is a colorist that I've worked with a lot on music videos. And that guy is, like we were saying with like, you know, even our DP Gus, those guys are incredibly professional, incredibly busy and way above our pay rate, but because of the pandemic and again, the response to the piece, because with, with, with Lauren, we showed him the piece and he was like, I love it, let's do it. And he also helped a lot in working with Gus and Carlos to really achieve that nostalgic look. Because Gus, yeah, yeah, because Gus and Carlos worked really closely to get the right lighting, get the right sense of like you know how the texture should feel. But then that was really accentuated combined with what Vanna's work and Alex's work at the color room, where everything was polished to a very very specific sheen. Yeah, yeah, and 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 again it really comes together in like the first and last shot like obviously the rest of the short looks amazing but the first shot and the last shot are like probably the two most important shots of, of the film because it's it's a closed loop you know it sets yeah. up the story and it closes it so nicely so like you really see the full display of everyone's talent in those shots of of the production design the lighting and the camera work uh it just and a, a color the colorist as well like just amazing um you know, I, we've talked about like our design, you know, we talked about like just the production and some of the work and the music, but I think we definitely have to talk about the most important part of the short, which is the performances. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, it's, it's great to have a really wonderful script, but it's always the hardest part is finding the right people yeah. to be in the short film. And we got really lucky that we had um. Paul, <laughs> Paul Eating, who uh is a very accomplished actor and voice actor himself and brian michael jones who is a very accomplished actor and puppeteer and arabella grant who um was uh the, the, the daughter in the short film so like carlos can you talk a little bit about what you were looking for in these performances and why we ended up going with paul yeah uh to be to be frank and of course, Brian, who gives a phenomenal performance as Emmett and is also the voice of Emmett. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a great experience. It was a, a very interesting one for me as well, because, you know, working on animation, sometimes I'm not that exposed to that side of thing, right? To the casting side of things. So this was really great. And not only that, uh, in, in this case, I, uh, you know, I generally, other small projects that we've done, uh, it's always been like, you know, not having a casting director, just trying to find friends, actor friends and things like that. And sometimes that works out fine. But in this case, you guys push me to as well say, oh, we should talk to Alan, you know, or casting director. He's going to be able to, to help us find a, a great actor for Frank. And I'm so glad that you guys put us that way because that's how we found Paul, right? So for Paul, I mean, you guys were there, right? Like we, we interview, we, we, I mean, interview, we, we have a, a, a casting call and we have some great candidates, by the way. I was very impressed. There was some really good, really good uh, actors on the, on the lineup that we had. Uh, but I think we all have to agree that when we saw the performance from Paul, there, there was just something that was that it was the character. You know what I mean? Like there's a moment where you just go, this is the character. Um, it's interesting because I do think the sword film is just a conversation, right? It's just a conversation between two characters. So in a way, for for a lot of actors, that it's it's a it's a it's a great moment to have, right? It's a great moment to act on. So I think people were very very uh, excited about that. So when we saw a lot of our our, our candidates were like great already, but Paul have this like such a deep connection to the the script uh, that. We thought we were not going to get him, and I think it wasn't that easy. I, I I think there was probably some questions about like why is he going to do one of these little independent short films, right? But I think again, uh, Paul connected to the story so much that I remember him mentioning us, um, mentioning to us like, oh no, I I told the manager I'm doing this. You know, if I'm getting the role, I'm doing it, and and that made me so happy because he was so involved. Again, and um, like an amazing actor. The reality is that. I think every take we shot was great, you know, so we didn't have to shoot a lot of takes because he, they, they both were so prepared. Well, three, three of them were so prepared and ready that the takes were, were always great. Um, and, and then in the, so that's from the side of Paul, which by the way, 
uh, he's uh, for the for the when we interview him and, and talk to him about it, he showed up and he had a beer and if, like it, it just he he looked exactly how I how I imagined him as I was writing it. So it was perfect. Uh, and then plus you put on top of that an incredible performance and it's like all right, uh, it was easy. <laughs> and then yeah, with Brian in terms of the puppeteering, uh, uh, honestly I. It, it, Brian was also another of those contacts, right? A, a friend of a friend that said, oh, well, I have a friend that's a puppeteer and he's a really good puppeteer. You have worked on some of the Henson production and then all of the great plays and also a great actor on top of it. So it was a contact a like singer. that. And a great singer, by the way, like, which by the way, puppeteers, a lot of them are very good singers, you know? So, yeah. but, but, but when we did the little test for the singing and he started singing, we were like, okay, well, <laughs> This is perfect. But yeah, with Brian was a, a friend of a friend that, that happened to line up perfectly. And, and it was it was amazing to, to have them involved, involved very early and everything was online, right? Because of the, the pandemic. So we were connecting online, talking about things, talking about the script, uh, making it better because they are very good improvisers as well. So, uh, so they will help me with some lines and, and tweaking things here and there. So it was very fun. Honestly, I have I was worried when I wrote the script because you know it's charming, it's funny, but there is a a, a heaviness to the story, right? If you if you watch it, so when you have a puppet on a film, it automatically um, the audience have an expectation, you know, an expectation of like ah, it's going to be lighter, it's going to be a funny, it's going to be right. So, which by the way, a lot of the Muppets also do things that are not that light, that are very uh, emotional, right? But there's a certain expectation. Uh, and I think it was really important to make sure that the puppet were, was able to deliver those performances, even knowing that it's just a piece of cloth with, you know, like, but it was really important that it was gonna uh, transmit the, the weight of the scene. Uh, but then just seeing Brian perform it uh, with, with Emmett, it, it made sense. And, um, and a great testament to that is, I think we, we always talk about this. We were filming one of the very emotional scenes and then the crew outside was looking at it on the bigger screen, seeing how everything was looking. And then some of the people outside, as we were filming this live, we were already like kind of choking up and feeling feeling the emotions. So yeah. in that moment, I just have a big release, like, oh yes, this is going to work. If they're watching live and they're reacting, I think the audience are gonna really get it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I kind of want to, uh, pick on something that you mentioned that I think is also really interesting is like you mentioned like people see a puppet and assume like oh this is going to be a charming fun family film which obviously Frank and Emmett is but there is that underlying theme of death and coming to terms of you know letting things go and moving mm -hmm. on in a way or and mm -hmm. passing on you know not passing on the torch, but passing on something uh, like Emmett to the next generation. Um, and and that was also like something that we we try to kind of strategize around, especially when we were starting this film festival circuit is uh, we were worried is like, who's going to want this or who's going to like select this? And I know Carlos, we, you were worried about that. But I was like, I've, I've always been told with film festivals is people are going to connect with a short no matter what and then they're going to find a way to program it into it and and it was always very interesting when we started that journey was we got programmed into like children's and family programs which is great then we got programmed into drama categories yeah, which yeah. Is great. and then we got programs like comedy and then the a music, music category <laughs> yeah. like so we got we i think across like the almost 40 or 40 ish film festivals we've been selected to like we got programmed everywhere and even, um, you know, very niche programs. And I think like one of the most interesting ones was like the Phoenix Film Festivals where like, uh, they're like, oh, we, you know, uh, we really want to select the short, but we want to put it in a program where it's called Double double Shot of Films, where we want to show another short film from your director, Carlos. And we were like, oh, well, <laughs> let's talk to Carlos because uh, Carlos, uh, his other work, he's an animator that works at DreamWorks on family films, <laughs> but his live action films are very dark and dramatic. So, yeah. 
So that was that was interesting because it is true that this is the best film that that um that I made that was maybe fully mine, right? I've have worked with a lot of other people and, and we generally do things, yeah, that are a little darker, a little more uh, you know, science fiction or like scarier things, right? Uh, so this one was very different. So you are right. It was interesting playing one after the other, right? One that was about a murder and the next one was a sweet story. But I do realize after doing a lot of different films like that, I realized that uh, even though I like some, I like making some of those great, um, you know, more scary horror um, sci-fi movies, I think they need to have a heart, right? And I think that's what uh, Frank and Emmett was so successful about like it's it's so much hard to it that uh, you know it, it it gets it, it's it gets stuck in your head when you watch it. I think on other ones, even films that I have made that are very well done and and they're entertaining, but maybe they don't have that level of heart and connection to the audience that I think make the film so much better, right? But it was interesting for sure. So in those two, uh, one after the other, like so much contrast on those two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, just to kind of wrap things up on this Q&A and hopefully people uh, enjoy the film and kind of learn a little bit of insight uh, on this. Uh, Jonathan, um, after working on a short like this, what do you hope people kind of take away after watching it? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, what I would hope people take away from this short is that you really feel inspired, honestly, both mm -hmm. for, for honestly, both on the story level, because it's such an, a beautiful story, but more importantly, be inspired to go make your own like short film, mainly because like this whole, I think our, our film making journey is just as beautiful and exciting as it was making the movie and seeing the movie live because it started with me, Carlos and you literally at a coffee, at a coffee table, talking about making this over two years ago. And then we got together and then a, a week later we were sent home with the pandemic. So it kind of pushed us back really, really back to figure things out, but we never folded. We just sat down, we figured it out. We got a lot of people, the right people involved to get behind it and make something special. Again, when we all three of us got together we were just hoping to make something that we could all be proud of. And then everything just came to life. Everything made so much sense. and. Obviously our resources were tight, but then it was you, Brian, who encouraged us, let's go crowdfunding. Let's see how far we can take this. And that opened up a other whole gateway. So it started with just us hoping to make something cool. And it led to this really, really incredible film that now is obviously in consideration for best short film, which is something I would never <laughs> thought we would say. So I think I want people to take away feeling inspired by the piece yeah. and inspired by to go make their own. Because you know, it is. It's like the story, what the story is telling, right? Like, I mean, it's telling the finding your passion and, and keep doing it until you find your space, you find your safe yeah. place, you find what you're good at and what you love doing. And the, in a way, that's where we did while making the short film. And that's what the story is about, right? It was yeah. pretty, it, it matches. Uh, I also think that, you know, you were saying, Jonathan, about like insp inspiring, right? And, and I've been getting a lot of messages from people now that we're screening it in different places. At war we were screening at DreamWorks and we're screening when it's screened at other places. And I have great messages that talk a lot about that, you know, about the inspiration, about like uh, from, from two sides, the story, the story is about that, but also, wow, you guys uh, on your spare time managed to do this, this you know, this film that, that have a... a that that hit them emotionally, right? So I think they also feel like they are encouraged to try to tell their own stories, like you're saying, Jonathan. So exactly what you're saying, I've been getting messages literally saying what you were expressing. So that's that's amazing. That's great. <laughs> yeah. And you know, same question to you, Carlos. Like, uh, what what is something obviously then that people have been messaging you about are taking away, but what do you also hope that they take away after watching a short film? Uh, after watching the short film. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, very similar to what Jonathan is saying that like keep pushing forward and and then I know that that you know in our case we're lucky uh, that we 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 found our passion. You know, in my case, I was really young when I found that. Thank you, th thanks to my mom and my parents that supported me wanting to draw and wanting to do this, uh, telling these weird stories. Um, uh, and, and by the way. 
it's very different to support somebody to to uh, be a doctor, let's say, because you know the outcome is going to be great, right? It's very different to support somebody that's doing something that back then, for example, now it's this, it's more of a career, right? It's more a thing that can be real. But back then, I'm just doing drawings and like writing stories and stuff and supporting your kid through something like that is not as... You know, it, it doesn't feel like, oh, this is going to work out fine. There's a very big risk that you will finish doing something else, which, by the way, is not a problem. As long as you can keep that passion, you can do something else. I was lucky enough to find it. And if so, if the audience can take something away, it will be like, keep looking for that, right? Keep looking for that passion that that might become your career or it might be something that that really drives your life and fills your life, you know? So it could be in this case, puppeteering, could be animating, could be writing, could be anything, you know, really. Uh, so I would say that's a, a big part of that, uh, that I hope the audience gets from the film. Absolutely. And uh, same, like I agree with you both, I hope people take all of that away as well from the short film. And at least from this q and I hope people learned a little bit of like behind the scenes of how stuff was made. I also like, Jonathan pointed out earlier, it kind of took a village and a community to make this short film. It was like friends of friends, friends from work, fr you know, acquaintances that we had made. And and also just like people, like strangers that we had never met. Um, so, uh, you know, that wanted to help. And uh, I think that's a huge shout out to our executive producer, Lucas, Lucas Ferrara, who, again, the seed and spark came across our short, loved it gave some money and then was like if you guys would need some more support let me know and and he kind of pushed us and encouraged us to like if we're going to do this let's do it right and yeah. really give it the resources that it needs including during the film festivals continuously staying involved and it's i think it's very rare when you have uh an ep that is as involved as that and very supportive um instead of just like putting their name on a project or giving you money in a way like, and that, that was the same for everyone. Like everyone gave their time and was supportive and went above and beyond to, you know, in their work to do something that came together super nicely for the short film. So, um, awesome. Well, uh, again, thank you both for, for taking the time to do this Q and A. Uh, thank you for those that took the time to watch this Q and A as well. So, uh, again, uh, thank you for watching Frank and Emma and we hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed this Q and A as well. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, everyone.